All right, good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. It is our last night of ZTV for the week. I'm Grace, your host. It is an episode of Make It Alexandria with Elisa Kovach of Alexandria Makers Market, and she is welcoming Jacqueline Briou of Clover and Maple Woodworks. So without further ado, I am going to bring on Elisa. Hi, Thanks, Elisa. Grace. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Always a pleasure to have you. I'm excited to hear all about Jacqueline's story in her business. So I'm going to bring her on and let you guys take it away. Sounds good. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. Thanks. How you doing? Hey, welcome. Welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Um, you guys, Jacqueline and I actually connected, I think, over Instagram initially mm -hmm. and just kind of found each other through social media um, and the powers that be. And so, Jacqueline, um, I just love everything about uh, what you do and your products. And, and actually, I don't think that um, it kind of in the brands that I've worked with, nobody else really does word working. So you really are uh, this really standout kind of brand. Would you tell us a little bit more about yourself and then about Clover and Maple, please? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to be back, I guess, in a in a in an interview scenario here. Um, so yeah. I uh, I let's see. I'm from Canada, so you might hear some of my accent come out right there. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, I grew up in Toronto, um, and um, uh, I'm a, this is a random factoid, but um, it, it, it's kind of relevant though, I think it, it ties into the woodworking, but I'm a, a middle child, uh, my older brother actually has cerebral palsy, and my sister is 10 years younger than me, so I became the, the you know, the child in the house who, um, who had to help out a lot and do all the things, so I, I think that actually plays a big role into uh, into why I'm sort of comfortable with some of the woodworking tools, but also uh, this like independent mindset where I'm like, I'll just figure it out on my own because <laughs> I kind of had to. Um, but yeah, I moved, um, let's see, I moved to Vancouver, British Columbia. So I lived at West for a while, for five years. I lived at there from 20, 2006 to 2011. Uh, and that's where I met my wife, who's American, which is what brought us here. <laughs> so, uh, and then we uh, moved back to Toronto for a bit. I went back to school, did another degree. And then we moved to Virginia. We actually went, um, we didn't know much about Delray at the time, but we knew about Old Town from a friend who had lived here. And so we, when we were looking for places to live, we zeroed in on Old Town and, uh, and ended up like stumbling upon Delray. And we had lived in Delray for um, the past probably five and a half of the seven years we've been here. And then we recently moved uh, to just south of Old Town. Um, so like, really, like we're just after um, after you leave and it turns into GW Parkway. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's, let's see what else. Uh, the Clover Maple. Do you want me to build on anything there? Any, any for any questions? No, no. I, I mean, I really <laughs> love how you got here. And um, I yes, tell us all about Clover and Maple because that sure. is really, yeah. And, and I know the backstory of your brand name, but if you wanted to share that yeah. as well, because I just think that that's really sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we had, and I, I, I think I've shared some of this. Actually, I know I've, I have a post about it, so I think we can, I can talk about it. Um, uh, 2019 was a crate, and this is, I, I, I'm like very specific about 2019 because we were like, oh, 2020 is going to be so much better. <laughs> it's got to be better. <laughs> but um, in 2019, uh, you know, um, we had we'd sort of been holding off and talking about children for a while, largely because my sister's 10 years younger than me, and I had a lot of responsibility growing up. And I just wanted to be in a place in my life where I felt like I had the, um, I don't know, I had the, 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 the means to take care of a child and the, like the finance, the financial support to do that and the emotional maturity. And just like, I had a lot I wanted to work through from my childhood, but I just, I wanted to be a really good parent. And so we, we held off for a while. Uh, and then in 2018, I want to say, um, we started going to the fertility clinic and um, we had decided that I was going to be the one to carry. And, um, and I unfortunately, you know, had a series of uh, sort of failed attempts. And then I, um, I suffered 
my first miscarriage in twenty nine in August twenty nineteen. And then a week later, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was just like boom, boom. Like we just and oh, at the time we were actually planning on moving back to Canada. Um, and I don't have to go into that whole story because it's it's just circuitous and it'll take the whole the whole half hour here. Um, but it was a whirlwind and it was just it was a lot to go through, but you know, we'd been together for a while. And so we, we actually, it's, it's, it's remarkable looking back on it because we are probably closer and we've always been very close and we get along really well. Things are good, but like, you know, we're closer now than we've ever been because we both went through really difficult things that neither of us could really empathize with, but we saw each other be really, really strong and just determined to, you know, to push through it. And, and I think we just have so much respect for one another for having, overcome those challenges. Um, unfortunately, I had another miscarriage in May of 2020. <laughs> and at that point, my wife had been through like, like she'd been through her surgery and her chemo and, and her radiation. She was in the middle of radiation when the pandemic hit. And we were like, you know, I think in the beginning of the pandemic, we were kind of like, what is this? Like, what, how, like everyone was just trying to orient themselves to the, to the, like the enormity of it. Like it was like, uh, it, it just how much it shifted everyone's lives. Uh, we were very grateful that her chemo was done because I was actually able to be with her in all the, in, in the infusion center for all of her treatment. And I did cold capping with her, which I wouldn't have been able to do if we were in the middle of a pandemic. So we able to, we were able to save like 60% of her hair. <laughs> so, uh, which is the whole thing. If anyone wants to talk about cold capping, happy to chat. <laughs> um, anyway, this is like, this is, I mean, it's a really big part of why I got into this, but uh, then in December of 2020, um, I was six weeks pregnant and uh, I, I lost my job. <laughs> so like my, my company was, they were laying off a bunch of researchers and I, I do a very niche thing in design. I do service design and they had let me go. And I was, you know, and I hadn't told anyone cause it was still early. And, um, and this is after rounds of IVF that I had switched to. And it was just like 20, 2019, 2020, we're crazy. <laughs> it's just like, we were just like on adrenaline just trying to push through it all. And when that happened, I, um, I had taken, so for Christmas, I think in 2020, no, no, 2019. So Christmas 2019, my wife had bought me um, some like gift certificates for woodcraft to go take some uh, some woodworking uh, classes and specifically a cutting board class. And I went there, this is pre-pandemic, so it was all fine. And I went there and I, I was like, I was the only woman there. It was like me and about six other guys. And uh, which I'm not, it's, uh, I'm used to that. I played baseball and like a boys hardball team in Canada and I, have just always done things it seems that all the boys like to do so that's fine <laughs> and um anyway uh after the after I, I just my, I had a really hard time with my job like I had and that's a whole it's a whole other story but I had just really my self-esteem was tanked my like my you know it was as if like we'd been through all this you know and and I had actually tried to apply for like short-term disability for mental health leave and I got denied twice and it was just like, what else do I have to go through to, you know, to like, to prove to insurance that like, like this is hard, you know, and to get some reprieve. And then, uh, so I just sort of self-financed my own, my own leave after that. And, um, and I, I don't know, I, I don't even remember like, like, you know, it was like December 2nd, I think 2020 and then January 21st, I registered an LLC. I started making a website, um, which I'm very fortunate. Like I have the technical skills to, you know, to, to do the site and do all the design and the graphics and stuff. Um, and I've always been into photography. My mom is an artist, so she's a painter, but I never took to painting. I always loved being behind the camera and like capturing things. So I've, I've always been into that. So I do my own photography. Um, but I, I don't, it was, again, I'm like, it was therapy for me, I think having, you know, having the woodworking and I, it started with a couple tools. Like I had an orbital sander <laughs> and I had, I don't even know what I got. I had a, what was my first tool? Um, I had the thickness planer was one of my first tools actually, which is probably not everyone's first tool, but I had done this cutting board workshop and that was like a core thing you needed to flatten the boards. So I was like, 
got to get a thickness planner. So, you know, that was a, a chunk of money and, uh, <laughs> and then bought that. And uh, I got some chisels and my wife like got me a few little odds and ends that the people at Woodcraft had told her that like, you know, every newbie woodworker should start out with these. And she got me some books on trees and like hand, like if I wanted to make anything by hand. And, uh, and I was simultaneously like building, like try, just trying to make stuff. Um, and you know what, I know what it was. I know what the, like the turning point was. I'm remembering now. And I may have said this last time. So I was doing coaching and I will, I will stop monologuing in a moment. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Um, but I had seen a career coach before I lost my job. It was actually through, we had a modern health benefit. And so I was like, again, it was this self-esteem thing. I just, I had a really hard time with that company. Um, and I was seeing her and she had on my website, I had my Instagram feed, my personal Instagram, not my new one that I have for Clover Maple, but I had some pictures of my cutting boards that I had made since Woodcraft, like since my, my workshop. And she was like, do you sell these? Like, they're really nice. <laughs> and, and I was like, no, I, um, I'm not, I don't sell them, but you know, if I, I if you want to, if you want one, I can, you know, like I, I can make that happen. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, that was the start. I was like, it was this moment of like, I, I need something that somebody wants. <laughs> like if she had nice things to say about my work and, and, um, yeah. And so I was just like delighted. And that was like, that had happened between December 2nd and January 21st, which is like, I want to buy your wood things. Wow. And, and then I turned it into like a, you know, a business and, uh, the name, I will, I will, I will close this off by answering the name question. <laughs> so my wife is Irish American, uh, like true Irish, like her parents, uh, are both from Galway. They both have Irish accents. They immigrated to America. They live in Boston. <laughs> they live in Dorchester <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> so they're like as Irish American as you can get. Um, and, uh, and then I, obviously I, I grew up in Canada and I lived there for my whole life until I was 30. Um, and so it is a combination of my wife and myself. And I was going to put it maple and clover, but that was like some of the domains were taken and some of the things were taken, but if I invert it, if I switched it, then I had more, I had more, uh, uh, I had more available domains and uh, social handles. So anyway, well, there you go. <laughs> it is, it's such a tender story of really how mm. you got to this point. Um, so I think that anybody watching just the hurdles that you were mm. kind of working through personally, you know, as a family, I think we can yeah. all just take a moment and just say, whoa, <laughs> um, <laughs> on top of a pandemic, right? Just, whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. I think, I think what I take from that though, is that, that this pandemic allowed a path that may not have been journeyed down, mm -hmm. um, or, or given the time to explore. And so mm -hmm. I'm actually really, I mean, it's such a rocky road here, but you know, I'm glad that Clover and Maple is here. Um, you. And so, <laughs> and you guys are just, I mean, truly, truly lovely. But let's talk a little bit about then. So you, you started with cutting boards and you do have yeah. beautiful cutting boards and what else kind of in not that much time, right? In six months yeah. time at this point, it's yes, not yes. just cutting boards anymore, folks. I oh my mean, God, that's really, right. It's only been six months. <laughs> I mean, let's let's put that into perspective, right? Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit then about how you kind of got into, what do I do next? What do I do next? Yeah. Where do I go from here? Totally. Uh, I can't, I, I, I just, just hearing you put it into perspective like that, I was like, wow, it's only been six months. I mean, it feels like it's been a part of my life for longer because it's just been so nourishing, you know? Um, so I see, yeah, I started out learning how to make uh, edge grain cutting boards, which uh, I will show you. Uh, I don't have one in front. Well, I do have one in front of me, but I'm just trying to get a slab of wood here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like which one I want to show you. Hang on. All right. Uh, this guy. No, oh, he's rounded. I need one that's like flat. You know, what? I'm just going to use the one I love. Okay. Ready? So this is, this is like my favorite piece. 
because <laughs> I, I love the knot. Yeah, oh, it's over here. Um, I just, I took some time with the chisel and I like, carved this out, but um, I also love, this is called uh, sapwood, which is the lighter part of the walnut. And this is heartwood. Um, I've also like all these things I've learned over time, but um, this can be called, um, it's this figure in it. Cause it's got this really nice pattern. This is sort of a knot here. And this is the knot that's exposed. There is some curl, they call it, when you see kind of like a glisten on the wood. It almost looks like waves and that bit here. So this one just has so much character. Uh, and it's definitely one of my more expensive pieces, but that's in, in large part because to me, it's like a piece of art. I just, and if no one ever buys it, I'm totally fine because I will just stare at it and pet it and love it. <laughs> it's, anyway, so, um, uh, but this is an example of, so the top part of the wood is the edge. Uh, and, or you can see the edge here, that's edge. Uh, but when you get, you can see it's much darker. It's really hard on camera. Let's see if I can zoom in. So, sorry, I'm like reverse angle here. There we go. So this is the end grain. That's really, really like solid. And then the edge grain is here. So often when I was at Woodcraft, I learned how to do edge grain cutting boards where you can cut them. And then I could take like, a piece of walnut, a piece of cherry, a piece of mahogany, and actually uh, join the edges and then glue them together and make a cutting board with different wood species. Um, personally, I'm a lot of people do that. I, I even though that was the first one I made, it's not my favorite way of doing them. I, I love to ideally sort of use the same species of wood. Um, I did have one that I sold a couple weekends ago. That was my last one where I used sort of little pieces of like wenge and walnut and maple and mix them together and you can kind of see and i'm happy to do those i just love the the live edge and sort of featuring the the solid wood um but the edge grain you can get really thick ones you can get like i have a thinner one here that's this is edge grain so this is like an edge giant edge grain cutting board um this is all walnut this is actually three pieces you can't tell because <laughs> i glued oh, wow. them together but this is one piece, this is one piece, and that's one piece. Um, and so that just helps it from warping. So if you kind of, the more, you know, if you put these pieces together, then you won't see it sort of get more susceptible to, um, to any sort of curves from water use or whatnot. So that's why you kind of use multiple pieces. Jack, but, and these pieces are beautiful. I just want to jump in with a couple questions we have super yeah. quick um, yeah, related sure. to... Yeah. You have people you, you're saying questions. that you That's like awesome. to work with some specific <laughs> types of wood. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you think that certain pieces of wood are easier or harder to work with? Uh, yes. Uh, that's the, my, that's, that's all I'm saying. No, I'm yes, just kidding. That's um, what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yes. What is so your I've, favorite type of wood to work with? It's so funny. This is, this goes around the woodworking community on Instagram all the time. Um, and it, I think a lot of it varies based on the geography, like where you're at and what you have um, access to. I love walnut because it's it, there's so many different ways it can it can um, I don't know like different slabs that you can get and there are different grain patterns and different like character characteristics to each one. Um, like I have probably eight or nine pieces of wood on my table in front of me, and they're all different. Right? And they're all walnut. Mm -hmm. um, walnut is hard. So, in the in the scheme of um, easier and harder to work with, maple is probably the hardest to work with because it is solid. It is like I was trying to plane some maple uh, a few weeks ago, and I put it through the planer, and you have to be really careful because it can actually chip at the at the surface of the wood because it's just so solid. Um, so sometimes I, you know, if you have a, a Oh my gosh, this is the pregnancy brain, but I'm like, I'm like trying to visualize a belt sander, I guess that has like, uh, it's, that's not quite right, but you basically, instead of a planer, you can send your wood through a sander that's going to sand some of the imperfections off as opposed to planing them off, which I, I would recommend for really solid species of wood like maple. Okay. Um, but it goes maple, cherry, walnut out of the three that you can get here that are good for cutting boards. Um, but when you use the end grain, they all become like super, super durable. Mm -hmm. so, all I don't right. know if that and totally then, answers the question. Yeah, so. no, that was great. I mean, it's 
more than I already knew about woodworking, which was nothing. <laughs> <Sure>. So, <Yeah. laughs> no, it's exciting. And another question from the audience. Do you, I'm sure you'll sure. cover this later, but do you build things on request? Do you create custom orders? I do. Um, I, I am slowing down a little bit right now because um, the pregnancy that I, that I alluded to at six weeks, I am now um, seven weeks away from my due date. <laughs> so we're, so we're getting close, which mm -hmm. is, I'm so nervous That's and exciting. excited, nervous because I just want to make sure everything's okay, but excited because we've been waiting for this for a while. So, okay. but to answer your question, um, I, I am open to doing certain orders that I can do with what I have. I have tons of inventory of wood. So like when people ask me, I'm like, I usually have a lot of live edge stuff. I have a bunch of different species of wood, uh, different cuts. Um, it just depends. But I think only because of the pregnancy, I'm slowing down a little bit right now as we get closer. I do have an event at the end of September. So I'm gonna have to ramp up a little bit to make some more. We're like, I'll just figure out how to put the newborn in like one of those little baby Bjorns and we'll mm -hmm. just do it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do do custom orders. Uh, so I, I, you know, if you have an idea, send it at me or send it my way. Um, and then we can discuss if it's something that I don't feel is within my ability or like something that I'm not able to take on. I do have other people I can recommend that I'm sort of connecting with. Um, but if it is, then we can talk about timelines and, and I do estimates and all that. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hand it back yeah. to you. <laughs> Do you have some of your other products maybe in front of you that you could show off for a little bit? Because I want to make sure people realize it's not just cutting boards that you have to offer at this point. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah. so it's funny. I um, where, I don't know. It's over there. Are you want to pass the bridge? Can you pass me that coaster? The one I, I'm just, I hit my, I'm, my, my clover. I'm just kidding. It's going to get me my other coaster. <laughs> um, so this is, I think, here, thank you. There you go. Uh, she likes to be behind the scenes. Okay. Um, so I made these. So these are epoxy. This is black epoxy up here. And I could take the label off, but they're they're like packaged right now. Um, so this uh, this is walnut. And it's funny, at first I would have called this black walnut because it's really dark. Uh, but this is just English. Sorry, not English. Uh, this is American, American walnut. Uh, and it's, I try to get all my wood from, I mean, I do all of my wood is Virginia based. So I try to stick to species that grow here. Um, but I kind of have this mold that I use that allows me to cut the pieces of wood and I put usually a long piece in and then I fill it with epoxy and I have different pigments that I can use. So this one's black. Uh, these ones have a really thick felt on them that I've started putting in, but I do have thinner felt that I'm probably using more now, but this only is three because <laughs> I attempted to do a really round edge on this one, which you can see this one has it a bit more. And you can see my my watermark. I need to put oil on this because uh, I've been using it like every night. <laughs> anyway, but this is more rounded, whereas these ones are not. Because when I started doing it, my um, uh, my router just like chewed it. Like I was like, oh my god, I almost lost my finger. <laughs> like it, I went to go put the coaster through, and it's like, <laughs> and it like it just chewed it. So I ended up. I, I'm actually I love this now because it totally worked out, and I actually love the. The round over ignore the my water stain here i'll fix that but um and it's actually something i'm learning i'm like okay how do i avoid having watermarks on coasters because you had this really nice wood and so i do want to i use all natural oils for everything that i make and i this one i i, I put wax like i do a coat of um um a mix of god it used to have mineral oil but now they get rid of all petroleum so it's great it's mostly coconut oil vitamin e uh some lemon oil uh, I use that on all the food safe surfaces. So um, that way you can, you know, you don't have to worry about any chemicals. It's very safe. Uh, the glue that I use is all food safe. Um, and the oil is from uh, a really small company in New Hampshire. It's just like him, his wife, and their like two year old son. And they, uh, they feature their son and all their stuff. And it's really sweet. So, <laughs> and they've only been around for a year. So I love supporting them. Um, so they're uh, bumble shoots. So if you see bumble shoots on my site, that's that's where I get my oil from. And then I use they have a all-in-one wood wax or like a wood conditioner. And so that's what I do afterwards, and I put wax on it. But I do think that the coasters, since they're not a food surface, I might explore something else that's a bit more protective for water. Um, so, but you can you can get that off. I just haven't done it yet. Anyway, those uh, this is 
Uh, I have, so I have a CNC. So I have, over the last six months, I realized now I've acquired a lot of tools and I have created a very robust uh, shop in my 12 by eight backyard shed. <laughs> I have like a whole desk collection system set up. I have a, um, I'm big into health. So I have made every effort to like, um, make sure that I'm not breathing in dust and cause it's very, it's carcinogenic and I'm don't want to, don't want to breathe that in. Um, so I have a good dust mask, actually stealth mask gave me a mask and I'm very grateful to them cause it's like an awesome mask. I know. And so I use that uh, and it's, they have N100 filters. So a lot of us now are familiar with N95. <laughs> these, these are N100. So it gets rid of like hundred percent of any particulates in the air. Um, it doesn't however, stop odors. So there's a charcoal filter I need to stop odors. Um, so if I'm using glue, um, not the wood glue, but I use uh, some wood filler and the epoxy can kind of smell. So I, I have another mask that stops me from breathing in fumes. Um, but yeah, the CNC work. So this I did for our nursery. I don't know if anybody watches Shit's Creek, but yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So we're big fans of Shit's Creek. Uh, go Canada. Uh, kind of love that they stole the Emmys last year. <laughs> So, um, and Moira is like the greatest character ever written on TV and she refers to any child as Bebe. And so we, I, uh, I did this design in Illustrator and then sent it over to Carbide Create and Carbide Motion. And um, I did one version of it and it was a little too small. And so I changed the font and made it bigger and yeah, but this is on Walnut. So I have this one and I'm gonna do three more. So I'll have three more of these. And I'm just toying with what leather I wanna add because I wanna hang it with some kind of leather strap and how would I do that? Yeah. Uh, all right, you're still there. I think I'm frozen. Oh, we're good, okay. Uh, ooh, this one's new. <laughs> Here you go. This is a board though. I know I need to show you things that are not cutting boards, but I do love um, making really, I've been playing with leather a lot more and I think I mentioned this, but this one I love because I did, I carved out, um, this is involved, I used, uh my jigsaw <laughs> but then i realized that wasn't the best approach and then i used my router to kind of cut this groove in here i guess you can see it there so the router there and then i set the plunge router setting so that i could carve it a little bit underneath and that way i could hide the leather in here so you could still put it on a table um and then i bought this leather i've been getting them from buckle guy which i'm sure there if there's anyone here who knows a good leather vendor that's more local please let me know i'd love to support more small companies or small businesses, but um, I do on both sides. And it's just, I love this one. I love olive. I'm sure I'm probably biasing my own products with my own tastes, but this is uh, walnut and olive leather and it's a serving board. So uh, this idea came up at a, a maker event. Actually, somebody I had made, um, I had made these, these actually sell a fair amount, but I had made these like magnetic uh, hangers. So you can like put, well, I don't have any paper behind me, but you can hang stuff with them. So you can, like, they're just, these are just earth magnets. Um, but underneath, if you see this little, so you can see a bit of a, that's a fascia board there, but I put two bars of rare earth magnets underneath and I've got some hangers on them. So you can hang it on your wall and then you can put, um, I don't know, like notes and photos and uh, someone's using it for conference badges. And so I had a lot of these at, at an event and then people were like, can you hang keys on it or ties? And I said, mm, probably not, but you know, but I could figure something out. And then I made this. So <laughs> this is just like an engine. <laughs> uh, so I had bought some walnut dowels and uh, used my, I have a drill press now. So I used my drill press to create the holes. And then I also now have this nifty keyhole router bit that I can use that I put these keyhole um, uh, basically like spots in the back. And that way you can hang things flush on your wall. So you just put the screws in and then it's right against the wall. So you don't have to worry about anything wobbling. Um, but yeah, this is Walnut. I love the live edge. Um, so it's that, that's a little different. Uh, last one I'll show you, and I, this is gonna involve moving the computer a little cause it's right on down here. There you go, <laughs> it's my table. So I'm gonna take the power out just for a second. Shouldn't, hopefully you're still good. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, so this is, I've been, you know, I actually knocked this down a hundred dollars cause I, and partly, it's partly because I want to sell it before the baby comes so we have space. <laughs> um, so if anybody's interested in a live edge walnut table, 
a, it's like a sofa table or a you know console table let me know <laughs> it's 48 inches by 14. <laughs> so uh so this is this is like a labor of love i uh bought these slabs um from a place nearby and uh and then debarked all the edges and sanded everything and um and planed it all and then i put a little bow tie in here i don't know if you can see the little bow tie anyway uh, and i did that just because there was a crack so i had to learn how to bow tie and little cracks and every project i've sort of learned something new and and it's been fun so anyway i heard a ding so i don't want to uh, i think we're probably getting close to time here <laughs> now that is i i i just wanted to make sure people did understand that i just feel like cutting boards are beautiful <laughs> But there's a lot happening with your brand and there's so much. You. And um, you've done some really cool um, beer bottle openers and oh, yeah. just there's so a yeah, lot yeah. of custom things. So oh, I yeah. just yes, <laughs> look, yes, I love them so much. Thank you. Here, I um, the camera when I, oh, we're back. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, there's some photos gonna oh there's the bear. That was that was that was the most ambitious thing I've made to date, I think. <laughs> It also got the most love on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that's a knife holder. So it probably be better for me to show that hanging, but it does hang and it holds kitchen knives. So I do those. Um, what else? Oh, my little, the little catch all trays. I made those with the CNC and I, again, I put leather on them. Um, and that's with poplar wood. Yeah. So well, anyway, just a snippet there. <laughs> I hope that everybody that's watching is going to go and follow Jacqueline over um, on Instagram and check out her website because I think you've realized that she has so much happening and just a lot of different products. And um, as we mentioned, if you are interested in kind of a custom order, perhaps now maybe give her um, into the fall when she's kind of yeah. back on track. Um, yeah. but first of all, I wanted to say congratulations. I'm so excited um, Thank you. about Thank you. and cannot wait to kind of <laughs> welcome her into the world and into the, our maker family. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, I have this dream of like her, I don't know, I just think it'd be really cute to have her at like at our, at our events if she can handle it. I'm, I'm sure I'm like every other parent who's watching this is probably like, ah, nope. <laughs> but like, I just... <laughs> I just think it'd be really cute to like bring her. I want to get a little baby, you know, your protection, and like bring her into the shop and like teach her things. So, yeah, I love that. No, I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys, what I also want to make sure to mention is that Jacqueline is going to be at the next um, Alexander Makers Market event, which we are doing in collaboration with the Garden on Eisenhower and with Safe Safe. Mm safe space nova and it is going to be on june 27th it is our growing pride at the garden we are going to have live music and food trucks and yoga sessions kid activities and then our amazing makers set up in their maker space and throughout their facility so i really really hope that people will come out and um, check out everything that you have to offer in addition to our other thank makers you. and we're just really excited for that event so um jacqueline yeah, i can't good. thank you enough i can't you were so candid and um just really upfront with yeah. your story and i think it's speaks to who you are and and it does really have a lot of vulnerable, rocky parts to it. But I think where you are right now is just like, hopefully, you know, that's in the past. And here we are now. Yeah. Um, with so yeah. much to celebrate. So. Thank you. Um, thank yeah, you we're, so we're much. A good place. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I cannot wait to see you in a few weeks at this event. We do. And I know. <laughs> it's going to be great. You guys, um, huge thanks to Jacqueline. Make sure that you tune in next Monday because Steve Hauk will be um, back on Monday living on music. And he's going to have some amazing guests. And then stay tuned through the rest of the week for all the under wonderful ZTV Live episodes. But in the meantime, you guys, please support local shop Alexandra, make it Alexandra whenever possible, and go be the good news in someone's life. <laughs>